Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with a trumpet for my people. Today is January 22nd, 2023. And I want to discuss a couple items here in this uh, video. Um, I want to talk about the sign of the dragon, Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 through 5. And I also want to talk about the sign of the Son of Man from Matthew chapter 24. And I want to consider if both of these prophecies may be fulfilled in the coming days through Comet C2022E3ZTF. Um, I want to show you right now where the comet is. Um, as I shared yesterday with you, uh, if you want to find this uh, comet, you will go from the Big Dipper here and go through these two stars and follow it up. And here in this region, um, in between the uh, Little Dipper and the Big Dipper, and then right in this area is the constellation of Draco. So if you can find the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper in your sky, uh, or through a... Uh, an application, a, a stargazing application, like Stellarium or Starwalk or something else, then you can uh, use that to find. Now, this is only visible from the northern uh, hemisphere. Uh, the people in the southern hemisphere will not be able to see uh, this until early February when it goes out here past uh, the north star of, of uh, the Little Dipper. Okay, now let's go back to December 18th. I want to go back to December 18th and show you where this comet was on the beginning of Hanukkah. Okay, as we were watching the beginning of Hanukkah, this, uh, this comet was entering into the crown, Corona Borealis, right on the first day of Hanukkah, just as we were watching. This was 40 days from the, the last blood moon on November 8th. 40 days to Hanukkah, and then this comet was coming right into the crown. And if we go forward to the end of Hanukkah, to the 26th and 27th of December, we're going to see it was still in the crown. So during the whole time of uh, Hanukkah, this comet was in the crown of Corona Borealis. Okay, now we're coming out here towards the constellation of Draco, coming back to where we are right now on January 22nd, okay. And now I want, what I want to do is I want to go forward to when we will be going across this line, which marks the tail of the dragon, okay. So we're coming up upon that right now. It's January 22nd. If we go forward to January 23rd and January 24th, by January 24th, we are going past the the uh, the uh, tail portion of uh, Draco. Okay. And so here we are on January 24th, Central Time in the unit in the United States and in in. Uh, in um, Merida, even if we change this to uh, Jerusalem, let's just change this to Jerusalem. Yeah, that's not going to make any big difference um, where we are. Um, but this is January 24th, okay? So I want to talk to you about January 24th and um, where we are in this process and what uh, what prophecies may be coming uh becoming fulfilled on uh, January 24th through uh, February 2nd when this comet is going to be closest to Earth. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 through 5. Okay, we uh, most of us have seen and know that in 2017, the first sign of Revelation chapter 12 was fulfilled when we saw a perfect uh, alignment of planets 
with uh, Jupiter in the womb of Virgo during 10 months uh, from 2016 to 2017. And then on the Feast of Trumpets of 2017, September 23rd and September 24th, we had the sign of Revelation chapter 12 with a woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, giving birth. Okay, and there was an alignment of planets and Jupiter had been in the constellation of Virgo for over 10 months. Okay, and that's the representation of the man-child and she was giving birth. And then exactly on uh, the Feast of Trumpets, then there was the alignment that took place. Okay, now we've been waiting for this second, uh, this second uh, sign from Revelation chapter 12 which um, many people have considered this could have been fulfilled in other ways or has this been fulfilled? But I think one thing that we have not seen is the third of the stars being thrown uh, to earth, whether that is a representation of actual stars and meteors and asteroids and a meteor shower coming to earth, um, raining down fire from the heavens, or if it's a symbolic of the the opening of the abyss and the and the in uh, the angels, the fallen angels being cast to earth. Okay, I don't think we've seen the full fulfillment of this yet. And so, as we consider this, let's read this text together and see uh, how this could be playing out in the heavens. Okay, Revelation twelve three, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her ch child as soon as it was born. Okay. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God into his throne. Okay. So we have a number of portions of this that I want to consider the first thing is, there appeared another wonder in heaven, a behold, a great red dragon. Okay, so we have a dragon in the heavens, which is which is a constellation named Draco. And it says it has seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads. Now, the one thing I had brought to your attention is that this, this comet is came through Corona Borealis, which is a crown, the... the uh, the the uh, the text the biblical text talks about the dragon having a crown, and then the the crown here has seven stars. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars in Corona Borealis, and there's seven crowns upon his head. So that's one part of this. The second part of this is his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. Okay, so we have the connection between this comet and the crown. And now we have coming out of the crown is coming across the tail of the dragon. Now, as it says, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, did cast them to the earth. Okay, now if we consider the, the location of where this comet is going to be crossing, okay, I mean, if you're considering here that from the tail of the, the dragon, you have one, two, three parts, okay? One, I mean, from here to here, I don't know where, you know, what part would be the tail or if this, this whole thing would be the tail. I mean, you have the head and then you have the tail. Okay, so we have you know, three parts of this. You have one part and two parts and three parts. So, you know, I'm not sure if this is, you know, exact or, or what, but it's interesting that it's coming across the, the tail of the dragon and it talks about a third part of the stars of heaven. Now, when it talks about the stars, Revelation gives the understanding that the stars are representations of angels. Okay, and so if, if they're throwing a third part of the stars of heaven to the earth, they're, they're not talking about literal stars. They're talking about the fallen angels, which is one third of the stars. The fallen angels are going to be coming to earth. And then, 
you have this final portion of this, the the the, uh, the stars being cast to earth, the fallen angels being cast to earth, and the dragon that stood before the woman, would, which was ready to be delivered, to, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, so this, this prophecy about the dragon and the tail of the dragon and the crown of the dragon is connected to the rapture of the church, which is being caught up unto God and to his throne. And this is the word here, rapture, or it's harpaso, caught up. This is the word that is being used. It's 726 Greek harpaso. Okay, and so is this the prophecy that we have been waiting for connected to the rapture of the church? So I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that this is going to be crossing uh, the tail of the dragon on January 24th, and then it's closest to Earth out here by the North Star. And at this time then, just as it goes past the, past the North Star, then the people from the Southern Hemisphere are going to be able to see the, the comet. Okay? And uh, so, so we have this information. And then I want to share with you about the sign of the Son of Man of Matthew chapter 24. Is this comet the sign of the Son of Man? Connected to the sign of the Son of Man? When will the sign of the Son of Man appear? Let's consider this as we look at Matthew chapter 24. Okay, again, we're looking at uh, the screenshot of January 24th as Comet E3ZTF is crossing the tail of the dragon. Okay, Matthew 24, 29 says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, before we continue here, I want to give you my perspective on this because many people argue about this and this this shows to many people this is showing them a post tribulation rapture but what i want to bring to everybody's attention and the way i understand it is that in matthew 24:29 it says immediately after the tribulation okay it does not say after the great tribulation it says after the tribulation okay now, let's go back to Matthew 24, 21, up on the upper left, it says, Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, so Jesus used the term great tribulation, and he used the term tribulation. Now, is there a difference between tribulation and great tribulation? Absolutely. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation. Okay? We are going through tribulation. Life is filled with tribulation from the very beginning of time, from the time of the disciples, through the time of the apostles, throughout the time of church history, since the time of Christ, the church has always gone through times of tribulation. And so when you, when you talk about tribulation, you're talking about a general time of persecution, a general time of suffering, a general time of trial and temptation that is upon the earth. But when it talks about the great tribulation, Jesus clarified, then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, so when you talk about great tribulation, you're talking about the final judgment of God upon the earth, the wrath of God being poured out upon the wicked. Okay, it's not just tribulation. It is great tribulation. So in Matthew 24, 29, it says immediately after the tribulation. So we are in tribulation, and this is what I have been sharing, and this is what I, I share on my channel, that we are in the tribulation. 
We're not in the Great Tribulation yet. The Great Tribulation is the final portion of the Tribulation period that will be uh, extreme, uh, extremely difficult. It will be after the rapture of the church. It will be the wrath of God. It will be the, the final judgment of God upon, the, uh, upon mankind. Okay, and so after the Tribulation, but before the Great Tribulation... Of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so as we talk about this, these signs, after the tribulation, there is going to be these signs. Okay, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay. Now, recently we had the final series of uh, solar and lunar eclipses. We're not going to have another complete total lunar eclipse, blood moon eclipse until 2025. Okay. So when you talk about a sign of the coming of Christ that the sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood before the day of the Lord. We are in this time frame where we have just had the last blood moon and there won't be another blood moon until 2025. So this is, this is a time I think that is being emphasized right where we are now. Not that it's going to go forward another three years and we have to wait for the next blood moon to, to have that as a sign connected to his coming. But I think that we are in this time frame. We need to be uh, diligent and vigilant right now with where we are. So the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light. October 25th, there was a partial solar eclipse, but the sun was darkened through the solar eclipse. There was a total lunar eclipse on November 8th. And then it goes on to say, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, now, the, the, the prophecy of Revelation chapter 12 and the dragon may be the connection here to this same event, the stars falling from heaven, just as it says in Revelation chapter 12, with the third of the stars of the tail of the dragon... Okay, the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, so is this connected to this final portion of these signs before the return of Christ when it says they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. It seems like there's a connection to Revelation chapter 12 when it talks about being caught up unto heaven. Okay? It'll be caught up. She'll be caught up. She'll be harpassoed. She'll be raptured. Okay? And this, this talks about the gathering of the elect with the great sound of a trumpet. After the stars are falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken... It says, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Okay, now, as we talk about this comet, there has been great uh, chatter about the fact that this could become a naked eye comet. Now, I, what I want to know is, could this be the sign of the Son of Man if people who are not able to see it through binoculars and telescopes. I mean, is this a sign to the entire world if the, the, uh, the normal people, the people who, uh, who are not even following what could be happening up in the heavens, they're not going to be able to see it? I mean, right now you have to see this comet through binoculars, through telescopes. It is visible through binoculars, through telescopes, but it is not yet a naked eye uh, comet. But when it talks about a sign, 
Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Okay, what is that? What does that mean? Is that is that a sign that everybody's going to be able to see? I mean, I would think that when it says there, then there will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That there should be something in the heavens that everybody can see. Okay, even if you can't see it from the southern hemisphere through the technology. And everybody else throughout the world showing this is a naked eye comet. Look at these are the pictures we're taking. This is the sign. This is a sign in the heavens. This is an amazing uh, something in the heavens that can be that is visible to everybody. Okay, then that would even fulfill even if people can't see it with the naked eye from the southern hemisphere but they're still able to see and know about it through technology through news through uh all of the publications through the internet okay and so but the question is will it become a naked eye comet will could this possibly become or is this possibly the sign of the Son of Man? And the reason I brought to your attention here, January 24th, I'm just throwing this out there as a consideration and as a possibility that once it's going across the tail of, Dra of Draco, that that might be the marker where this comet maybe explodes or lights up or becomes a great, incredible, I mean, we can't know that this could happen scientifically. This would have to be, I mean, this would have to be an utter miracle from God for this comet to somehow light up or explode or just become a beaming light in the sky as it's going across the tail of Draco. And this would this would come then into, I mean, if we're looking at January 23rd, January 24th, January 25th, we're looking at a final seven or eight day warning to this comet be, being closest to Earth on February 1st and February 2nd. And what an amazing sign that would be in the heavens if this comet became a naked eye comet seven or eight days before it comes closest to earth and this is the sign that when it's closest to earth that the stars of the heavens are falling to the earth and that that is going to be the time of the escape when he sends his angels with the great sound of a trumpet they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end from one end of the heaven to the other okay so I just wanted to share uh, this, all of this information with you, tying some things together, giving you some understanding from my perspective, um, how this might fulfill Revelation chapter 12, uh, verses 3 through 5, how it might fulfill uh, Matthew 24, 29 through 31. Okay, so I just, I wanted to put all of this information together for you guys and um, just share this. You know, will something happen? to the the comet over the next days will it become a naked eye uh, observation a neo just as like in the in the in the movie the matrix neo naked eye observation neo will that be the sign of the of the matrix coming to fruition the new world order taking its final stand the neo, the near earth observation, the naked eye observation, or the near earth object. Okay, so just a couple things to think about on that regard. And um, just giving you some biblical perspective, the way I am seeing this comet. And um, I hope that helps. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave your questions for me in the comment section. I pray you guys are blessed. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. The sign of his coming revealed.